Welcome on in. Ultimate team guide for beginners coming your way. If you, even if you're not a beginner, I hope this helps you just better understand ultimate team. So don't, don't be afraid. Feel free to skip around if you want. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to put up different chapters based off of different things. So feel free to come on in. I hope this helps. You, leave a comment down below if you're, anything's confusing, not making any sense. I'm putting out a video for you to better understand how I would have started my team if I could start over. So if you're starting for square one, definitely check that out. I'm also going to put out another video about how to get XP for the field pass as quickly as possible. So definitely check that one out as well. But if you're just here to better understand what ultimate team is in general and how to play it, let's dive right on into it. And I'm going to talk about this at a very beginner level. So if this is a little bit slow, I apologize, but I'm trying to be as basic and understanding as possible. Let's first start off. What is ultimate team? Ultimate team is like a fantasy draft, right? So in your ultimate team, rather than just playing with Alabama, who's Alabama's currently pl current players, you're going to have a binder of players from all different types of teams. They're going to be retired players. They're going to be current players. They're going to be NFL now players. They're going to be anyone who's gone through college and played at a level that EA wants to put out as an actual card. It's like a collection card, just like you have collected cards since you were a little kid. So that is essentially what, what it pretty much is. And you're going to build your team based off of how you, fee how you feel is um, just custom to what you like to play, whether you like to do running quarterbacks, you like to run the ball, you know, you want to blitz people. Maybe it's just based off of your favorite players that you grew up watching and you want to make a team based off of those favorite players. It's a wide variety of options that you could have, and that's what makes it fun. It's like a collection of a fantasy draft that you got to do. So that pretty much is what is Ultimate Team. So now that you know like what Ultimate Team is, before we continue, I kind of want to just talk about the top section, what those things actually are, because they're going to be very important as we talk about this throughout the entire game itself you have training points and currency in the top right corner currency is virtual currency that is what you use to buy players what you get when you sell players what you get when you uh, complete challenges complete xp it's essentially your money your virtual money to buy and sell players or packs the other is points now what is points points are your physical Cash, your credit card. You put your credit card down, you get these points. Essentially, you're exchanging your physical, actual money into this game. And that's one thing I will caveat this with. If you're new to this, this is very much so a pay-to-win game mode. Now, I have built my team with zero physical, actual dollars. I have not put a single cent into my team. I'm very competitive. You can do it. It's a little bit harder. You have to follow the things that I talk about but you can do it. But if you are okay with spending your physical actual money, putting your credit card down, you can pay for points, which allows you to buy these packs. So that way you get these players. And that's what a lot of people do. And the faster you get better players, the bigger advantage you're going to have on everybody else in this game mode. So that is something you definitely need to be aware of and be cautious of. Lastly, you have training. Now, training is what we talk about, and you can do it in one or two ways. You can use your training points to also buy packs because packs can be bought with virtual currency, they can be pa paid with actual points, or they can be bought with training points. So how do you get training points as well? Training points can either be uh, earned via selling your players, so you can sell your player for training points, or that is pretty much it. You sell your player for training points. But these training points are very important because you can either buy packs or you can make your players better. By going to your players and upgrading them, you can give them special abilities. So by giving them upgrades, you can give them improved cut moves against man coverage. So you can do things like that and give them special abilities using these training points. So it's very important to understand the three different things that you have. Now, I'm going to start off with the auction house. Now, the auction house is very important because you're going to start with a base packs, right? 
So the auctions are where you buy and sell players. You can get players either in packs or via the auction house. So I'm going to start with the auction house, then we're going to talk about the packs next. In the auction house, you have three things here. You have my bids, which is our bids auctions that you have purchased players or placed a bid on. My auctions are auctions that you have posted. So players that you said, hey, I'm trying to sell this player. I want this amount of money for it. And then there's the auction house. The auction house is where all the players usually sit. You can filter the auction house based off of whatever you want. You can filter it based off of position. You can filter it whether you're looking for stadiums, playbooks, uniforms, what type of strategy. We'll talk about that. Um, you can filter it off of any of those things. You can filter it based off of overall, what tier they are. Now, the tier section is going to be their overall, right? So it's going to lump them into certain categories. If you clicked on rare, it's going to be like low 80s. Um, you can do it by team. Say you want to find everybody who's on Alabama, who's out here and available. It'll list every player who's in here that's available for Alabama of all different overalls. And then nextly, you have program, you have cores. So each season there's different cores, right? So you have the season one players, which is our field pass. And you have conference stories. So each card has like different variations. So there's different variations and each of them come in different groups. So that is a, it's what's called a program. So all of your conference stories. So you'll see players from different conference things. The ICYMI is in case you missed it pack. Um, so they're just different variations of the players. They have slight variations of their overalls and their abilities. So it's definitely something that you really want to pay attention to. Um, but it's all kind of the same stuff. What kind of pack they're a part of, we'll talk about adding to sets later on. But they're, they're all very popular things of different variations of all of this stuff here. And then you have your legends, obviously which is like your ex-NFL players who are retired now, Marshall Falk, Pat White, Davian Clowney. Um, some of them are still playing. Some of them are not playing. Some of them were just college heroes. And then lastly, you can also search based off of a style, right? Chemistry. Now, chemistry is going to be very important because the more people you have in chemistry, so for instance, I'll give you an example. If, you have, if you're running a 3-4 defensive playbook, the more people you have who have the three, four. So in the bottom, you can see it says chemistry is three, four. The more people you have in your lineup that have a three, four chemistry, the more likely you are to have players boost. So if you hit certain thresholds, you're going to give your player attribute boost through having better chemistry. Now, it's pretty simple. You search for the player you want. You can search based off of buy now. You can search based off of overall. You can search based off of any of those characteristics that we just talked about. And it's very simple. Say you want a CJ Clink scale. You can either buy him right now for 150 virtual currency, which you have, or you can place a bid. And when you place the bid, other people can also bid on him, making the bid go up, which is definitely something that you can do. A little bit more risky, but it's something you can do. So you come in here. You filter around, you find the players that you like, you buy them, they're now on your team. That's one way to get players. Now let's talk about packs. So there's two different ways to get packs, or three different ways to get packs. You can do get packs via challenges. So by doing all of these challenges, you just come in here, you complete the challenges, it's just you versus the AI, nobody else. You either get, you get packs right here and virtual currency, based off of you beating the requirements on the right side of this screen. So that is one way to get packs by beating these challenges. The other way to get packs is by going to live events and clicking on your field pass. So triangle or Y, it's going to give you your field pass here. And you can see this is your season rewards. By completing these challenges here, you're going to level up your season. And every time you level up, you get either virtual currency or you get packs. 
And then lastly, you can buy the packs. So you go to Marketplace and you go to Store. You can buy these packs. So there's different variations of the packs you can use. Like I said, you can use training, you can use points, you can use virtual currency, any of those things. And you click onto the pack, it'll tell you what you get. You're gonna get um you're gonna get a 16 players at uncommon ability. You're gonna get five players at an 85 or better. Probability of getting an 85 plus player, 100% probability. Probability of getting an 86% player, 87, 88. This is all of those things that you can you have the potential to get. So you're just essentially spending your money, your virtual currency, your training points, whatever you want it to be. That's what you're doing on a daily basis, trying to just get these packs. So those are the three ways in which you can actually get players either packs, challenges, or you can buy them. Or lastly, you can do what is called sets. You go over here to sets, there's all these presets there for you. Now, how do you, how do you achieve these sets, right? So you click on them and based off of the players that you have, it'll pre-select these players for you, right? So you can see here, there's a check on this person, which means I've already added him to this set. So essentially you're trying to fill all these slots and your reward is going to be to receive that pack. So if I trade in four 72 overall players, I'm going to get a 74 to 75 overall player. And you can see here, if there's a check, it means he's added. If there's not a check when there's a plus sign, that means he's available to be added to this set. So by hitting square, add all to set, I can add them all. Now I have three players here. And if I just go here, you can see there was a magnifying glass, which means I don't have any more players of that ability, but I can now search for one. So I'm searching for him. Say, all right, I want this person. I'm going to buy him here. I buy him here. He's now mine. I now own him. I did this through the auction house. It's just a shortcut window. And then I would just go back to the set. And you can see here, there's a plus now. Now I would confirm that I want him added to this set. And now I can redeem all four of those players for a pack. So now I've redeemed all four of them for a pack. And you can open up your pack. And what you're going to do is you're going to get a random selection of a 74 to 75 overall player. And now that player is mine. And I can use him. I can add him to the lineup. I can do all different things for it. Obviously, there's different levels of these packs. These ones are the lower tier levels. There's some high tier levels. Like you can get an 87 overall legend if you add in all of these levels of players. So there's so many different varieties of sets that you can do. Um, I don't fully recommend doing a lot of the sets just because you're going to spend more VC than it actually would have been to buy somebody that you actually wanted rather than rolling the dice of somebody who you probably didn't want. So that is pretty much how you get players. So let's talk about your lineup now, and then we'll talk about what game modes you can play. So once you have everything in, you got all the players that you wanted, you can either find them in your item binder here, and you can go to them and you can upgrade them using your training points. So you can go to upgrades and what this is, you spend five, five training points to unlock abilities. So if there is no hexagon here and there's no ability pluses, then don't spend your training points on them because you cannot increase their abilities. Now we'll talk about abilities. So obviously these abilities, you can buy more training points and each one of them is different. And we're going to talk about that right now. But for instance, just, to, just so you know, if you go to a player and they don't have those pluses below the, 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 these ones are diamonds, but below the diamonds, don't spend your training points because they don't have what is a called abilities. And if you go to your lineup, you have eight abilities on offense that you can spend and eight abilities on defense. By scrolling all the way to the right, you can go to active players, click manage abilities. You can see here, I get eight points. In the top right, it says AP limit eight of eight. 
So each of these points has a 2 or a 3 or a 4 next to them. So if you were back over on this screen here, and you were looking at the player, so you have 8 on offense, 8 on defense. So I have my receiver right now. I have him kitted up for abilities. You can see on the right side it says 2 AP. So that means this ability costs 2 of my 8 that I get on offense. This one costs 2. So now he's costing me 4 of my 8. This one costs 1. So if I own 8 abilities on offense, this one person is using 5 of them. So that means I only have 3 more to use. So you have to be very careful at which player you want to be your main player. So I put it as my wide receiver and my halfback. Sometimes you want it as your quarterback, you can do it as your quarterback as well. I use my abilities on offense towards those two players, but you can do it on whatever you personally want. You can just toggle it. He's either activated. So this is deactivated. You can see the square is empty. And then now the square has a check mark next to it. Now it's turned on. And you can see the number on the right change from 6 to 8. And same thing on defense. If you went over to defense, activate abilities, you can see I have 6 of 8 being used. All right? Deactivate, activate. All right? There you go. Now 8 of 8. So those are the ways to use your attributes. Now I talked about chemistry. You can see here on the right side of your screen, the more you have in this section, the better off you're going to be. So you can see the white circles that are over the overalls. That is because I have a very high chemistry. Those players are three, four players, or they have some sort of other chemistry, like my strategy, things like that, that give the boost needed to increase your player's overall abilities. The other way to do it is what is called strategy cards. You have strategy cards here that you equip. I have one for offensive line and I have one for defensive backs. That's giving an extra attribute boost towards these specific skill groups. Towards the offensive line, towards the defensive backs. Offensive playbook, defensive playbook. Visuals, what stadium you want to play at, what your home uniform is, what your away uniform is. That is pretty much your lineup. So that is pretty much how players go. I already talked about how to sell players. I talked about how to buy players. Um, I talked about how to get players through packs, how to get players through sets. Um, all of those things are available. Now let's talk about the game modes that you can play. Solo season, something I highly recommend you jumping into right off the gate. Freshman difficulty, varsity difficulty, All-American difficulty. You versus the computer. That's what Solo Seasons is. If you go to Rewards and Divisions, you can see here, if you get one, one win, you get 1,500 coins. In a season, is you get eight total games to win five. If you win five games, you go to the playoffs, the college football playoffs, and then you have to win three games to win what is called a national championship. If you win the national championship, you get an additional pack. You get an additional pack on top of that. So it's very important to test this stuff out. I highly recommend testing it all out, playing in it a little bit. But you get each each level will give you different rewards. The higher and more difficult you play, obviously, the bigger the rewards. Solo seasons, you versus the computer. Same thing with solo battles, you versus the computer. But instead of playing the AI's freshman difficulty team, you're going to play a random actual user's team, but it's still you versus the computer. Head to Head has three different game modes. Uh, I'll talk about squads in a second. You have regular game modes, which is same as solo seasons, but it's you versus actual real people online, you versus multiplayer. Same format, five of, you had eight games to win five, and then you go to what is college football. And then you climb ranks. So if you, if you, um, if you level up, say you win five, then you go to the next level up. And then you go to the next level up. So you start off in freshman. If you win five games, that means you're advancing. You go up to the next level. And if you win five games, you go up to the next level. So on and so forth. And obviously, you're, you're, each one will be a little bit different. And each one will be a little bit better.
get more rewards the higher up you go. Champs is a game mode. It's a weekly game mode. Resets every Thursday. Uh, this game mode resets. And you have you get big rewards for this. Um, you have to get 20 wins and you get the max reward. You can get rewards for just winning one game. Bigger rewards, bigger packs, and essentially that's it's a weekly resetting counter. Now there's squads. Squads is you and either one or two other friends that you can play. One of them, one of you is playing offense, one of you is playing defense, one of you is playing coaching. Now, when I say you're playing offense, defense, you're just using your offense while you're using their defense or using their head coaching, which is their uniforms and or their uh stadium. You're all playing on one team at the same time, though. So you're all playing offense together. You're all playing defense together. So it's you versus another group of people all playing together as one team. And then lastly, you have a couple other like kind of mini game modes. It's called house rules. You have overtime, which you're not going to get any VC for. And then you have touchdown tango. So touchdown tango uh, is a mini kind of mini game mode. Quick game, second half only. 25 yard first downs each touchdown is 14 points instead of seven and then you get up by 28 points you automatically win the game so those are the game modes that you play you can also practice as well but obviously you don't get anything there i covered the field pass how to level up your field pass i pretty much covered everything that you can imagine um, if you have any questions if there's something i didn't cover please let me know i'm super happy to help you all just leave a comment down below i hope this helps Check out the other videos on how to build your team with $0 spent. I appreciate you all. Do not forget to like, subscribe. Check out all the videos coming out.